Hey guys, my name is Carrington and I wanted to make a video kind of describing how to vinyl wrap all of the chrome trim on a Tesla Model S. Uh, this is my um, 2016 uh, 90D um, and so I didn't have any real videos to go off of describing exactly how to do specific uh, parts of, uh, of the Model S. Specifically I had um, questions about the mirrors because they look particularly tricky, um, the front emblems, uh, how to do that, and then uh, kind of also the uh, the back uh, rear applique here. Um, so after I did it, I decided that I wanted to make a video describing it for everyone else. Oh, also the handles. The handles looked uh, kind of tricky. So so there's an overview of the car. It's, it's all done. Um, took me about 25 hours, um, definitely not straight. Uh, over the course of about two weeks to do it all. Um, a little background, I, I don't have any real skills in vinyl wrapping. Um, it was all learned off YouTube through a, a, a ton of videos, uh, specifically CK Wraps. He has a ton of videos on online of, of how to do it all. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go through every single piece and describe uh, how I did it and some tips for anybody else who kind of wants to try it. So. Um, I guess we'll start up front. Um, these first two parts, uh, the front tee and the uh, the little piece underneath that. So let me pop the uh, let me pop the hood, and we'll start here. Um, so it's definitely best to to take off the tee in order to do this uh, this bottom section here. So to take off the tee, take off this uh, plastic cover right here. There are two bolts right on top. Um, they're Torx. I can't remember if they're Torx 20 or 16. I, I, I'll, I'll put it in the description uh, afterwards. Two right here, and then there's actually one on the back side, which is a little tricky to get to because uh, it kind of runs into some of this uh, interior stuff. And you can get it. Um, I would take the bit uh, and then use um, a pair of pliers or something to turn it because the, the the clearance is really uh, really pretty small. Um, but you can get that off, and then this entire piece comes off. Um, so I'll talk about the, the two different uh, types of wrap I used. I used an Avery, and then I used a, uh, a, a Vivid. So this front is actually Vivid. And you can tell because you can, it'll be tough to capture on camera, but you can see the, um, the pattern of the air egress that they use. Um, it's kind of it maybe hard to pick up on the uh, on the camera, but you can you can tell it has a specific pattern to it um, that I don't particularly care for, and uh, it, that Avery doesn't do that. Um, so <clears throat> um, I don't think I'm going to rewrap it, but just because it's it's right up front. But uh, that's something to note uh, as a difference between the Avery and uh, the Vivid. Um, but it, it came out really good. Um, taking this piece off, I would wrap the top. And, and fold it over to the front and then tuck underneath. Same thing with the T. Wrap, stick your wrap into the top slit here and then pull it down and then wrap the sides. This is tough. This is very, very difficult. I would not start with this piece. I would definitely get some pieces like this and some of the, uh, some of the other pieces down here done first so you can kind of understand how the vinyl reacts to, to heat and get some techniques down before starting something like this. Uh, it's just small, it's complex, it won't be on the car so you're kind of holding it with one hand while you're, while you're vinyl wrapping. Definitely don't, uh, don't start there. I made, uh, made that mistake. Actually my girlfriend, uh, excuse me, fiance, uh, did that piece uh, and, and did a really good job. So, uh, okay, now this piece. Um, again, once the T is gone, this is a lot easier to do. I did this all in one piece. Um, in retrospect, I may have done it in two pieces and seamed it right in the middle, but uh, the, the biggest key here is to take one big piece of wrap, the length of it, uh, you know, you only have, you know, it's only about three inches deep, so it's not, it's not too, too wide. Um, stick it in there, get the vinyl down in the center, start in the center, and work your way out. Once this piece is off, you have a little bit better access to the corner, so you can trim that up real nicely. Uh, once you get it on there and tuck it under this edge, then you can take your, your, your knife and slit it right along the edge. It, it has a really nice clean cut after you do that. Um, 
That piece wasn't too difficult, like I said. Um, I would probably do it in two pieces. After doing it once, it was very difficult to get it to stick in here and then translate over. Um, so that's really all I have in this front piece. Um, let's go down to these bottom little slits. Uh, the shape of them, pretty easy. Actually getting in there, pretty difficult. Um, so I don't know if you'll be able to see in there. Um, but it goes back about, again, three inches or so. Let's see if it'll focus. Probably won't focus. Um, cut a square of about three inches plus maybe another three inches or two inches so that you can wrap it down underneath. I don't know if you can see underneath there or not. But I definitely didn't wrap it all the way underneath. Uh, the trickiest part here is that um, this is not... A perfect fit it has a little bit of a gap so make sure whenever you wrap it around and you are trying to cut this edge give it a little bit of extra what I would do is take some masking tape mask this out get it get it in this uh, this uh, corner really nice and then instead of cutting right at the corner give yourself another eighth of an inch and cut on the masking tape so you have a little bit of extra and then take uh, any kind of uh, squeegee or tool that you have and tuck it underneath this edge. I had to put in some inlays because I had uh, cut the piece too small um, but just remember um, you know give yourself a little bit of extra so you don't see the uh, the little bit of uh, chrome in the corners. Um, so that's that's it for the front again do the same on the on the other two. Uh, the real difficulty and doing those pieces is that it's just a it's just a tight area it's it's hard to get your hands in there uh, it's it's not so much technically difficult just uh, just just tough so moving on to the side um, the uh, little turn markers here um, these are super easy uh, just take your take your vinyl lay it across the top um, you can easily see this nice it has a really nice edge really nice edge um, you can cut that out with your with your sharp knife uh, one tool overall, or one one tip overall with vinyl wrapping, keep your your razor blades super sharp. Pop them off, get a new one. Um, you don't realize how dull your blade is until you put a new one on. Uh, it just makes such a huge difference. If you're pulling the vinyl at all while you're cutting it, your your blade is 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 too dull, uh, and that's definitely true for this one right here. You get a nice a nice edge that you can cut right into. It makes a really nice shape. Uh, again, uh, cutting cutting this out super easy, super easy. Just cut right in the the nice uh, edges that it gives you. What I would do is take a take your fingernail and just like run it in the edge to get it down there, so you can see exactly where it is. And then take your you know your knife and, and cut it out. It's, it's it's not too hard at all. Um, a few general tips for uh, cutting vinyl: hit it with heat first before you cut it with the knife. Hitting it with heat releases the tension so that you don't get any pullback and uh, don't cut while it's still hot so wrap it um, hit it with heat let it sit for a second until it cools down and then cut with your knife that'll prevent any kind of tension any kind of pullback uh, and it'll keep it nice and uh, nice and sharp so did that to both sides um, and then now let's go with this bottom piece this is actually pretty difficult it's real small um, but it's actually pretty difficult. Let me open the doors here and I'll show you why it was difficult. Um, you know, the size of it, it, it's it's small. It's only, you know, an inch by an inch or so, but it goes all, sorry, it's so dirty. It goes all the way up in here. Getting it in that corner, really tricky. My fingers are not big enough to tuck it in there. Uh, and then let me show you this other part too. It actually widens up, so it gets wider right in here so I have that actually wrapped um, so I cut a piece that was the full width of up here so maybe two and a half inches cut a full width of it and then I tucked it tucked it in here kind of I slid the entire piece of vinyl underneath the door got it so that it was nice and connected up here and then trimmed off the excess all the way up here uh, and then and then did the rest of the piece um, you know this you know this stuff isn't isn't difficult at all start on the top wrap it down to the front and then trim off any excess again making sure you heat it before you do any trimming um, another overall tip I would I would say is use lots of masking tape 
lots and lots of masking tape. On this piece here, you have a really nice edge that you can tuck it underneath. Um, but say, say you take the vinyl, you wrap it on the piece that you want to wrap, and then you let it overhang and you wrap it down to this uh, to this red part. So you, and you can feel that you have a nice uh, nice edge in there, and you cut it. Well, you haven't really wrapped into the slit. Okay. So what you want to do? Lay down uh, masking tape on the paint all the way down the entire thing, all the way down the entire thing. Vinyl really doesn't stick that well to masking tape. So what you can do is put, uh, put the masking tape on, put the vinyl on top of it, take your tool, and I'll, uh, I'll give a description of all the tools I use, uh, but take your, your, your sharp um, uh, tool and, and tuck it into these edges really good. And whenever you do that, it won't stick to the uh, masking tape and it'll push underneath and you get a really nice clean uh, look there even after you cut it. Um, if you don't use the masking tape, it will stick here, it'll stick here, and whenever you press it into this middle part, it won't actually put extra material in there, it'll just stretch into that gap, so that whenever you cut it, it's going to pull back, so it's not actually going to be wrapped into that gap. Um, so yeah, good luck on this one. Getting it tucked in here was very difficult. Again, look, look, how, look how tiny that is, unless you're taking the door off. Oh. You can easily take these rockers off. I didn't want to take those off. I wanted to do everything on the car. Uh, you can take those off. There's videos on how to do that online. Um, again, the cleanest look, taking those off, wrapping those off the car, that's going to give you a much better look. But I did also do it on the car, just a little bit more difficult. Okay, let's, uh, let's look at the, uh, the window trim. Um, so I end up getting a five foot by 10 foot piece of vinyl and that was specifically because I wanted to do this piece here all in one piece no seams comes all the way around all the way through here and ends right here this is all one piece okay in order to do that you have to have one long piece of vinyl I think that's about nine feet long eight and a half or nine feet long and the only way to do that properly with one piece is to have a piece of vinyl that big so uh, what you don't need and this is kind of this is this is good to to remember. You don't need a piece this wide from here up to here. Okay, you do need a piece at minimum this wide. But what you can do is you can cut your vinyl here and then leave a straight strip that's just the width of this overall piece. Your vinyl that you lay onto the car does not have to be curved like that. Okay, you can take a straight piece of vinyl straight piece of vinyl and as you pull and stretch it across the uh, the trim you can make it do that curve very easily okay don't waste a ton of vinyl by by actually cutting it in this shape from about here on just do a straight piece just do a straight piece about two or three inches wide uh, again on this masking tape masking tape on the edges so that you can really tuck in on this edge. I mean, honestly, in here, I have an extra eighth of an inch of vinyl wrapping all the way into those edges because I was able to tuck it in really good and then come back with my sharp knife and, uh, and cut off all the access. Um, here, here can be a bit tricky. Um, it can be tempting to take your big piece of vinyl, wrap across the front, and then try to stretch this edge in, okay, to get this. I would take the vinyl, come across here, get it on this edge first, right here, and then stretch it over this way. The only reason I say that is if you try to wrap from this top edge and then wrap down and try to get in here, this edge starts getting really, really stretched. Uh, and it can have some pullback if, if, if you do it that way. Um, again, take your razor blade right on the inside. There's a nice groove here. You can easily get into this nice groove. Same with the bottom. Uh, technically, this piece is not that difficult to do, just takes a lot of vinyl and it forces you to get a big old piece. Um, let's go to this piece here. These are very, these are the easiest pieces to wrap on the entire car. Uh, I'll start from one side here. It's nice and wrapped all the way to the, uh, all the way to the corner. Uh, take this piece, uh, you know, two or three inches wide. Start here, have it stretch and then stretch it all the way down. Anchor it on the other edge and then get all of your, uh, get all of your um, wrinkles and stuff out. Super easy to do. Again, use masking tape on the bottom to keep it off the paint so you can really tuck it up underneath. And then there's a nice gasket seal in here that you can take your uh, your little tool 
and really push it down into this gasket, uh, and then you know hit it with your knife and uh, and uh, and do it. Um, yeah, no problems, no problems there. That was that was pretty easy. Okay, door handles. Um, um, they aren't as difficult as as they look. I thought this was going to be the most difficult part of the car. Um, it wasn't too bad. I wrapped this handle differently than I wrapped the other the other three door handles. I learned on this one uh, and improved on the next one. I started off wrapping the front face and then wrapping up to meet this curve. And while it works, you can see this one's not done very well. You can still see a little bit of the silver right there. Okay, that uh, I'm gonna rewrap that one. That that's not that's not acceptable to me. Um, these. I did a little bit differently. I took uh, I took a piece of vinyl, cut it um, about here and about here, you know, an extra three inches on either side. Started on the top edge, okay, with about an eighth of an inch extra on top. Laid it down, laid down flat so that this is nice and glassed out, and then stretched it over the front until this was glassed out. So you can do this whole piece. All glassed out without any kind of uh, any kind of heat or anything else. It works out quite nicely. Then trim off this bottom. Okay, let's see if I can go underneath here. So what I did, wrap it down until you have you know an extra eighth of an inch uh, of coverage here. Okay, and then cut that off. Don't try to keep wrapping all the way around this edge. It does not work well. So underneath this back piece here. Uh, there's an eighth of an inch of the front section of vinyl. Now, take this, you'll have, once you've, once you've cut that off, you have an extra tab, you have an extra tab of vinyl uh, back here. And cut that so it's square, and then wrap that from the back, wrap it around, and then curve it underneath. Uh, yeah, it doesn't give you complete coverage. You can see there's still some, uh, there's still some chrome left under here. I, you know, you just can't see it. Same thing with the front. Wrap, uh, take the little bit of extra that you have off the front lip, curve it right underneath there, and then you're good to go. That's uh, that's all you really need to do for the handles. Um, but the biggest trick was uh, starting from the top and wrapping to the front. All right. So again, I'm, I'll I'll redo that front. I mean, it's totally this is, um, but I know that uh, that's it's it's not good enough, especially for the 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 door I use all the time. Oh. Okay, and the next, uh, next part, you're gonna be left with a piece of vinyl covering this, right? Trim it in about uh, a half an inch from, from this curve, okay? Cut out the excess in the middle. Heat it up and just roll it over. Roll it over the edge, roll it over the edge. And then I actually took that piece of vinyl that I cut out and then I inlaid it on the inside so it's nice and smooth so you can't, uh, you can't feel where the different vinyls are. So uh, the inside is, is covered as well. It will leave a little bit, let's see if you can see that, a little bit of chrome showing there, but again, you know, if you walk up right to the car, you don't see, you don't see any chrome. You don't see any chrome at all. Totally good enough for me. Okay, now to the mirror. So, so I did this, I did this with the mirror section on, but I removed the movable section of the mirror, okay? So what I did, take off the mirror cap. You start with a, a pry tool under this edge right here. Pry, 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 pry. This entire thing pops off. I was unsuccessful in doing this without breaking off one little tab. He's from the top right here. He goes straight down, very, very flimsy tab. I was unable to, uh, to do either one of them without breaking off that little tab. There is no issue with security even with that tab off of it. It is, it is, it is still very secure. There's still tabs here, 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 and here, um, but they're, they're of a different type and it still holds it quite nicely. Okay, take off this cap. <clears throat> You'll see one screw, two screw, three screw, and they're coming down from the top into this piece. This is a separate piece. I wanted to wrap this piece separately from this piece with this piece off. And you can do that. This piece comes off once you get those three torques removed here. Pry, 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 pry. This piece comes off. And you can wrap this separately, which is what I did. Um, this piece is not uh, too, too difficult to wrap. I like to start, start with this edge and wrap 
down and underneath here. What you want to do, start off with no tension on this front edge, okay? And then wrap down underneath and you have lots of surface area which can hold more tension down here. What you don't want to do is start down underneath here, wrap forward, and then have to put a lot of tension on this front edge. This will peel. This will start to peel back. You have wind constantly blowing on this part. You have lots of tension on here. It's going to end up peeling back and you're going to see that nasty edge. So start up here, work your way down. Uh, you know, this is kind of goofy, wrapping around here, do the best you can, you're not going to see it all that much. And then with this piece actually off, uh, you can wrap totally around this edge and into the inside of it and be totally fine. So that's, uh, you know, it takes, it took me about 45 minutes to wrap each one of these. Um, uh, it can be a little difficult wrapping on the inside of this edge, okay, on the inside of this, um, but it's not too bad. Okay, now the mirror. So I wrap this in two pieces. Start with the bottom, okay? Cut off a piece that is, you know, significantly longer on both sides. Start with this edge here and laying it out uh, on this whole flat piece. It's really, that, that part's not too bad. Pull, wrap up to the top, uh, and then secure it. This piece for me, only goes to a seam right in here. It's really actually a pretty small piece. It covers this. I wanted the top piece here to cover this, cover this front edge, come all the way down, and then come to here. So that's what I did. So this on this mirror is wrapped from here over this, over this edge, and then is seamed. You can't even see it. There's a seam between the two pieces of vinyl under this edge. Uh, that's, I think that's going to hold up really nicely. It looks nice. You can't see any seams. Uh, it's pretty good. Um, wrapping the back side of it is pretty tricky. I don't even know if I'll be able to get my camera in here. Um, but I took the, the under piece, wrapped it up to this edge, right to here. And I cut it off all the way, all the way up to here. I took the top piece, wrapped it down, and then I met it right at this edge. So we'll see how that holds up. I didn't give it a whole lot of overlap, but I think it'll, I think it'll be okay. Um, again, on this piece, use lots of uh, masking tape. Mask off this piece of window. Vinyl sticks really good to glass, so it's hard to tuck it into this edge if it's constantly sticking uh, on that glass. And on the bottom, too. Lots of, uh, lots of masking tape on here, so you can really push uh, underneath that edge. Um, you know, oh! Okay, so the next part, <sighs> wrapping underneath uh, underneath this part. So the cap is off, this part's off, it still leaves the entire mirror structure. You can take the mirror off, sort of. So what you do, and let me do this. Um, I have it so that, I have it so that the mirrors do not automatically close every single time. Um, just to be a little bit easier on the vinyl. It totally handles it fine, but you know, I want this to last a long time. Uh, I don't want that constantly going back and forth. So what I would do, close your mirrors, just like this, take a pry tool underneath this, and you can rotate this mirror while the pry tool is underneath it, and this whole thing will pop up out of its rotational socket. And then it's kind of loose. Now there's still um, wires connecting it, so you can't completely take it off the car, but it'll loosen up enough that you can wrap underneath, uh, underneath this section. Um, it's kind of tricky, it's kind of hard to deal with. You only get maybe an inch or two of, uh, of slack with the mirror, but it allows you to completely wrap underneath. So let me put those back out. But as you can see, you know, vinyl's uh, holding up nicely. Nothing, uh, nothing wrong with that at all. Um, put those back out. There you go. Still totally works. Okay. Um, yeah. Let me know if you guys have any specific questions about the mirror. It was two and a half hours to wrap uh, that piece. Um, it's probably not that difficult, but for the first time, I had no clue what I was doing. Second mirror took me an hour hour and a half, not that long. I think it was actually done a little bit nicer, um, but you know, I learned a lot on the first try. Um, there's the other mirror. Uh, here are some of the other 
handles. They look pretty much the uh, pretty much the same. Okay, and now to the back the rear applique here. Um, I'm gonna redo this. I'm not happy with it. Uh, I used the wrong vinyl, and you can definitely see the air egress in here. Let's see if I can get it to uh, to focus. Um, let's see if I can get the light to hit it right. Uh, it just has a pattern that's not particularly flattering that the Avery really just doesn't have. You know, if I come to here, you don't see the you don't see the air egress nearly as much. Uh, and uh, so I have a ton more vinyl because I bought a five foot by ten foot section and didn't use nearly uh, you know the whole roll. So I'll, I'll redo this. But um, most of this is pretty easy. Um, you know, lay your masking tape down so you can really tuck into the edges. Uh, this here, don't try. Uh, I, I made this mistake. Don't try to fold this over and stretch it into this uh, recess without cutting some slack. Once you start rolling this over, it starts pulling from this side, and then you just overstretch and overstretch. If you just put a little slit in the middle and then uh, and then tuck it in, you really reduce a lot of stress. So slit that first before you try uh, laying it in. Okay, the letters. Um, these are tough. These are really tough. You know, somebody that has been doing this a while could probably do this no problem. These are real tough. I went into this expecting that I could wrap over the letters to be completely black. No way, no way. The, 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 the curves are too tight. I can't stretch it good enough. Um, you know, places where it'll start coming up like in these corners would look terrible. So I wrapped it all. The, ter the, the letters look awful. Then I slit right on top right down the middle and then I start wrapping around the edges okay so in some places you know it's not quite meeting up in the corners uh, you know trying to tuck all these edges in without pulling it like this is really tough to try to wrap this edge this top edge here while not messing up the bottom edge there's some inlays in there it's it's not great um, you know from back here totally fine I mean you can't you can't tell at all but uh, I know I did it and uh, it's not good enough for me. So another thing, I didn't have a, a big enough piece of vinyl, so I actually seamed it here. That's 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 not good enough. You know, this was really a trial run that I ended up leaving on the car, but that's a seam uh, with another piece of uh, longer vinyl to finish the rest of it. So I'll be redoing that. Um, one thing I am happy with uh, this T. Um, you know, a lot of people said that you c you couldn't really wrap the T, um, but uh, you can. I don't know how well it'll hold up. Um, but uh, it looks pretty darn good. I didn't want to take it off and plastic dip or anything. But uh, again, you basically do it the same as the front. Start from the top, wrap the front face, tuck the edge. You know, start from the top, wrap the whole thing down, and then uh, and then wrap the uh, the sides of it. Um, use masking tape. Don't let it stick to the paint. Tuck it around as much as you can, and uh, you know, it, it it looks pretty pretty darn good. Um, I did the spoiler, so my spoiler was an aftermarket spoiler that was a cheapy black spoiler. I wanted that carbon fiber look, so I took uh, Vivid's uh, carbon fiber and wrapped it. It looks really nice. I love Vivid's uh, carbon fiber. It's really nice. Um, with this, it this was, I think, the first or second piece I had ever wrapped. Um, that was a bit of an undertaking. It's kind of a big piece. It's actually pretty complex. Uh, it doesn't look all that complex, but it is, especially when you start trying to wrap the front face and then wrap it down underneath here. This I'm going to redo as well. Uh, I have a few methods I think that is going to work a lot better for this. But what I would do is take the long piece of vinyl and stretch as hard as you possibly can over this edge all the way down. So pull and stretch down onto here and then it will kind of lay itself down underneath. What I ended up with, and this is gonna be ugly, and I don't wanna show you guys, but I end up with fingers, these nasty, nasty fingers underneath here. Um, let me see if it'll focus on there. I don't know if you can see that. Really nasty fingers, I hate it. Um, if anything, for right now, I may just cut this, cut this, uh, cut this bottom edge, and then inlay a piece of black uh, until I get the time to, uh, to rewrap the thing properly. Um, this was before I, I knew the, uh, the tip about um, uh, using masking tape. If you had masking tape all the way around that, give yourself about uh, an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch of excess here so that you can tuck completely under the front of the edge. Uh, that would have been a nice, 
a uh, really nice finish. There's a few places here where the vinyl is a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit too short, so it's not really tucking completely underneath the edge. I'll definitely do it again. Um, but as for the look at the carbon fiber, it it looks great. I really love it. I really love it. Okay, so I think I think that's all. I think that's all the uh, that's all the piece of the car. Um, you know, you can wrap uh, as as perfectly or uh, as shoddy as as you'd like. Um, you know, for the most part, you can wrap pretty poorly and it'll still look good from afar. Like from here, you can't tell any of these uh, minor details that I've been going over. Um, but if it, uh, if it bothers you, if you have a little bit of OCD, you know, you can spend a lot of time wrapping. Like I said, about 25 hours for me. You know, obviously completely unexperienced. A real person uh, could wrap this much, 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 much quicker. Um, but uh, yeah, that's... Uh, so that's the exterior. Let me know if you guys have any questions about any of these, uh, any of these parts, and I'm going to start another video for the, uh, the interior. Okay, so let's go over some of the interior pieces I wrapped. Um, this, uh, this left side here, uh, it's in that same vivid carbon fiber. It really looks awesome. Uh, this card started off with the piano, uh, piano black, um, so I just wrapped those pieces in the, uh, in the carbon fiber. Uh, this piece over to the left of the steering wheel. Let me see if I can get a good shot of it. Yep, piece to the left of the steering wheel, or the right of the steering wheel. Looks great. And then the uh, the big piece uh, in front of the uh, the passenger seat. And uh, you know, it really, really looks great. Uh, and then finally, uh, I wrap this piece. Um, this is, uh, real quick, this one's super simple to, uh, to remove. Kind of pry these edges, which pry very easily. Pry them both apart, slide this up a little bit, grab the edge of it, and once these, uh, once the two sides are pried apart, this pops right off a slider. Uh, it has a bunch of uh, little security uh, clips, and this whole thing pops off super simple. And then you can wrap it by itself. Uh, a little tricky wrapping around uh, this little guy, this little bar. Uh, what I did is I wrapped down, uh, I made a slit on the top, so I could easily wrap this side without stressing it and then wrap this side without stressing it. So it's kind of pre-slit this and then wrap around the edge. You know, use your tool to really tuck underneath here. Um, but that's pretty easy. Okay, getting to these parts. I did not wrap, I did not wrap these parts on the car. I took these off. Uh, that, was, uh, that was an undertaking. Um, there is one Torx underneath here. Um, once you get that off, take this side piece off. It pries right off. I believe there's a, a bolt on the side there. Um, this whole piece that goes around the uh, steering column, it all pries off. Pries off from the bottom, pop, 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 pop. Bunch of clips come off, that whole bottom piece comes off all in one. Okay, then it gets a bit tricky. Let me get in here. Um, this piece right underneath uh, this plastic piece, this pops off and it reveals two or three screws. I want to take those off. Um, once you get this off, uh, drop the steering column. So lower the steering column, and there's a screw on either side to remove this little uh, leather, I don't know, gap filler guy. Uh, remove him. Um, you should then see some more screws to remove this bezel. Okay, remove that bezel. I think there's some more screws up in the corner. Once, once you remove this, you can see them. Um, then comes the fun part of popping the dash up. So you actually have to pop the dash up to get two screws and two screws out of here. And that starts over here. Once you get this side screw up, pry the dash up with the pry tool. Pop, pop, pop. It helps uh, once you get this uh, piece underneath. The dash kind of pries up and you'll be able to pry up the dash maybe an inch and a half or two inches to get those two extra bolts. Be really careful with this piece of trim. This piece of trim that goes right across the top. It is attached to the dash and can bend super easily. It's just a really thin piece of aluminum. So be really careful with that. But you got to put some force 
and to prime this dash up to get to those screws. That's, I almost called it quits because I was really pulling on it to get there. Um, there may be another screw down here to get uh, to get this piece off. I don't actually remember. But once you get this, those two screws off and find whatever screws down here, uh, they, they slide right off. And they actually slide off with the AC vents. It all comes out as one piece. You can disassemble that later on, and, which I did. I took the, the AC vent off of the... Uh, the the trim piece here so I could really wrap into the inside uh, and as you see I mean it does it looks it looks nice it looks really nice uh, on this side so uh, I don't actually remember same same deal you go go over to uh, um, the the door open the door panel there's a, a side piece uh, that you pop off and there's a screw holding the top of the dash on pry up the dash pry up the dash you'll see I think one or two screws, maybe a screw over on that side. Um, and then I think once you drop, once you open the, uh, um, the glove compartment, there may be a screw or two in there. And this, this, this dash does the same thing. Pry, pry, pry from the bottom and the whole thing comes off. And then the, I think there's uh, like three or four screws on the bottom holding this, this, uh, this, um, this trim on. Once you get those, the whole thing comes out. Uh, you know, wrap it and, and get it back on there. Um, you know, this is a, a bit of a, a tough curve getting it in there uh, for me. Um, it came out nice, but uh, it, was, it was a bit of a tough curve. Uh, everything else was, was pretty uh, pretty easy. Um, it's definitely a lot easier to to wrap these kind of smaller pieces if you have uh, somebody helping you out, kind of holding the piece while you wrap it in certain uh, certain times. So if you got a buddy, um, utilize them best as you can um, I think uh, I think that's it again I, I, I only learned of these bolts and, and everything else from a few other uh, YouTube videos that I found um, the trickiest ones were finding the uh, the ones underneath here and some of the other things that you had to disassemble like uh, this uh, little filler piece and everything else that was the trickiest uh, that came out super easy that was not that was not tricky at all um, so yeah me uh, I'll get a a view of it from the the back here just so you can kind of see um, you know I haven't done a side-by-side -side comparison of the factory uh, carbon but uh, it looks good oh and I forgot this piece this piece this piece I'll, I'll go back up to the front so this piece right here uh, also very simple to uh, to get out um, to take these off, kind of slide them forward, and you literally, let me see if I can hold the camera, you literally take it and rip them off. You just pull straight up and out, uh, and they come off their sliders. Uh, it, it's, it's very simple. Take those off. I think this prize, I think this whole thing just pries off once, uh, once, once these have uh, uh, come off. Um, I don't know if this is true, but I would have liked to have labeled, you know, take a piece of masking tape or something on the front and say front left side and put a front right side so that you know you know this one's not going to go there this one they may be uh, interchangeable but uh you know i i put them on the first time and they just worked or they may not be interchangeable so just you know one piece of masking tape will totally uh solve that uh this i cut out you know wrap the whole the whole thing in vinyl and then i took a real sharp uh, knife and cut out the edge so that uh, the silver kind of shine through and uh, I think it looks really nice. Um, these edges you want to wrap completely around the edge so when it fits you know sits in here it's nice and flush you can't see the edge looks good um, but yeah that one was a pretty easy piece to get in and out uh, no uh, no problem kind of like the, uh, the centerpiece there so yeah that's the uh, interior trim let me know if you uh, if you guys have any questions Okay, so here are some of the tools I use uh, in my vinyl wrapping. So I think one of the most important things to get is a box because uh, there's a lot of stuff. It requires a lot. So here's my vinyl wrapping box with a bunch of other junk in there. Um, a bag to uh, hold all your extra pieces of vinyl that you will uh, uh, cut off and want to save for random projects and uh, any uh, little inlays that you may have to do, you know, save save your extra piece of vinyl. You'll never know when you uh, when you need that. Um, so I'll start here. Um, here's a, a three-piece set of uh, 
prying tools for interior trim. They're plastic, they're hard plastic. Uh, these work great for all kinds of stuff, but definitely a must have for prying uh, the stuff apart on the, on the inside of the car. Um, be a little careful when you're using these and heat because it will uh, deform the, uh, the very tip of, uh, of the guy. So uh, without heat, these are very, very, very hard and durable. Um, but with a little bit of heat, uh, you kind of ruin the edge. So be careful with those. Um, definitely a must have for any of the interior stuff. Um, these guys, these are awesome. So these are for tucking trim into tight places. Um, there's three different hardnesses. Uh, this is, uh, you know, the, the least firm uh, than this guy, a little more firm. And then the black, which is a, a hard plastic. It's, it's very hard. This, if you used incorrectly, if you're, if you're trying to, uh, you know, push, push vinyl down into a... Uh, uh, a little gap, this will cut the, uh, the vinyl. So I didn't use this one very much at all, mostly the middle one. That was a good kind of uh, halfway in between of getting it in the, um, the crease and, and not actually cutting the film. Um, super useful, a pair of tweezers. A really nice pair of tweezers is really helpful, especially whenever you're doing the um, uh, emblems. Uh, it's a, definitely a must have. Uh, the knives, um, I have two different kinds of knives. I, I bought a package off. Um, Amazon that included a knife, this little guy, which we'll talk about a little bit, a, uh, a squeegee and a few other things. Um, this is a 45 degree blade. Um, and then I kind of learned afterwards that a 30 degree blade is much nicer. So, well, oh, uh, that one I broke off and, uh, it's not really 30 degree. Let me see if there's another one on here. There you go. So there's a 30 degree blade, uh, a little bit sharper. Uh, it gets into corners a little bit nicer. Uh, definitely go with a 30 degree blade and, uh, um, so I think I got the three pack, you know, through the same type here, um, three pack with a bunch of, uh, spare blades, something like 10 bucks. I mean, it's super, super cheap. Um, so obviously must have with the, uh, with the blades. Um, let's go to this guy. This guy is super helpful for vinyl with the backing still on. So if you're cutting huge chunks of, of vinyl off of bigger rolls of vinyl, uh, this is super helpful. It, uh, the, the vinyl and the backing kind of go right in that slit, and then you just zip it right across. I mean, you could do the same thing with scissors. Ooh, I don't have scissors on here. Um, scissors are also very important uh, for times where this guy isn't all that handy, or just uh, for cutting off excess vinyl whenever you're, uh, <clears throat> when you're laying it on. This guy's super nice. Uh, sharp little blade, I think he'll last uh, a long time. But yeah, you just zip him right with uh, the vinyl and the backing all in one piece. Um, I use these the least. Um, so this is a little squeegee with a felt tip on it. Uh, honestly, for the the bits of vinyl that we were uh, we were doing, uh, don't really use them. They're 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 too wide, um, and the edge is not thin enough to get into the little tiny creases. Um, so I didn't do very much of these, but I have two of them. Um, still, definitely have one for maybe the the rear applique or. Um, that, uh, that front piece under the front emblem, uh, where it's a little bit wider, that could be useful. But honestly, most of the time I used, uh, my thumb and a, um, a microfiber, um, something that slides in the vinyl really nicely. Um, that's going to be one of your, one of your best squeegees. <laughs> Uh, next up is the wrap cut. This stuff, uh, 3M makes uh, a different one. This is knifeless tape. It's really interesting stuff. Um, let me see if I can find an edge to show you. Um, basically, you, you can look up uh, videos on how to use knifeless tape. But uh, you lay it down. It's a piece of tape, and then underneath it is a piece of filament. You lay the vinyl on top of it, squeeze it down real good, and then you pop the... Uh, the filament off underneath it and then zip it right through the vinyl and it cuts it really, really nice and sharp and uh, uh, it's the only way if you're going to be seaming two pieces of vinyl together. Uh, I use that uh, solely for the mirror. The mirror on the underside where I had the two pieces of vinyl and seam together, uh, use that the entire time. Um, spare blades. Like I said in the other videos, pop off a blade as soon as you think it's even remotely uh, dull, um, because if you're thinking about it, it's probably dull. So, and these are so cheap that you gotta just pop them off. Um, yeah, to pop them off the blade, uh, I used uh, a pair of uh, uh, pliers here and just 
grabbed the uh, the edge of the blade and popped off uh, popped off the old blade. Uh, there are better ways to do it, but that seemed to work pretty well for me. So I always kept a, a pair of pliers with me. Uh, moving on, masking tape. Uh, I told you how to use that. Uh, put it on the on the paint side. Um, so that the vinyl doesn't stick to it, so lay that on there, and then you can use, uh, use your tools to tuck it in all the little creases and stuff, and that keeps it from sticking to the paint. Um, definitely a, a must-have, and it protects the paint, so whenever you are using your super sharp knives, you are cutting uh, into grooves that don't have any paint, or if you slip, you're cutting on this stuff, and this, this saved me quite a bit. Um, I don't have the... Uh, Best hands and uh, yeah, definitely, definitely saved me a few times. Uh, alcohol, um, make sure everything that you're working on is super, super clean, dry, and hit it with alcohol before you uh, before you start wrapping. Um, definitely must have. And the most important, yes, do the surfaces. But what I would do, take the alcohol, put it on a rag, uh, and then run that rag with one of these behind it. Uh, into all the crevices that you uh, you know maybe wrapping into. That's to get all the gunk and and all the stuff out before you you wrap on top of it. Make sure you get a nice clean surface to uh, uh, to get to. Um, oh, I don't I didn't cover the debadging in the other videos, um, but I did debadge the the 90D, and so it was a combination of the floss. This is just normal floss, which I would. Actually, recommend not using floss. Find some uh, some fishing line or something else, something a little bit uh, more durable than this crappy floss that I have. Um, heat up the emblems. Take your heat gun, which we'll get to. Heat up the emblems a little bit. Take a, a good piece of fishing line or better floss, and it just zips right behind the uh, uh, the letters in the emblem. And they'll pop right off. Um, I'll describe a, a good method that I learned from CK Wraps on how to save your emblems um, so that you can reapply them. I'll get to that in a second. Um, goo gone. Once you've taken the emblems off, it leaves a little bit of residue behind it. Take the goo gone, uh, a little bit of heat, your nails, um, and that uh, the old adhesive comes right off. Um, lots of towels. Use lots of clean towels. Towels to uh, Clean uh, the, the surface before you before you start wrapping, uh, and then also use it for wrapping. It's really good you, to to take it over your thumb and use that to slide across the uh, the vinyl to to use as a squeegee. Um, it helps out a lot. Uh, having a, a um, measuring tape is is super helpful, especially whenever you're trying to size up how big. The pieces for above the tr uh, above the window is, you know, I said it was like nine and a half feet, but getting something exact uh, so that you can transfer that to your big, you know, five foot by ten foot roll, uh, that's that's a must. Um, you know, keep that around. Uh, this is a nice little carrying case that the uh, the these little guys came in. Um, I would keep all those uh, one or two knives and the uh, the tweezers in here. It's just you know. I grab it, I know I have basically everything I need in one little carrying case, that was super nice. Um, this is a Torx, I think I got the wrong size, but either way, you'll need a Torx to do the, uh, the interior trim stuff, and you'll need a Torx to do the front emblem. So make sure you uh, find out what size that is. I think I got a 10 or something like that, it was the wrong size. Again, I'll put that in the comments to tell you exactly which one to get. These are super cheap, you know, five or six bucks. Um, and then a heat gun, uh, also important, you know, you can use a blow dryer, that will only get you so far. A blow dryer puts out a lot more air than you need, you just need a little bit of warm air, and going with a real heat gun is the way to go. This one, super cheap off uh, uh, Amazon, and it held up really, really well. I, I love this thing, and I beat it to death, because you're constantly, you know, heating up the vinyl, throwing that down real quick, getting the vinyl, you know, working it while it's still warm, and then picking it back up. You're constantly throwing this thing up and down and stuff. Uh, having a, a decent heat gun uh, is uh, very, very important. Uh, should go along with this, an extension cord. I was working in my uh, um, parking garage, so I was finding an open outlet down there and doing it in the parking garage, and so having an extension cord is super helpful if you're not gonna be doing uh, all the vinyl uh, in your house. Um, I have an IR little thermometer here. Um, I never actually got around to uh, using it, 
Um, but this can be really helpful. So whenever you're wrapping stuff, once you are done, once, once, say you've wrapped uh, a piece of the window trim, once it's all cut out, it's good to go, you need to post heat it. So you need to go around all the edges and heat it up hot. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get the adhesive to seal down on the piece of trim, but you're also trying to get it to forget its memory. Okay, once the vinyl's forgotten its memory, it's not gonna peel back on you because it doesn't know that it's supposed to peel back. So you can heat this up and I don't quote me on exactly the temperature, but something like 180 degrees you wanna get the vinyl up to to totally forget the memory. That's what I was gonna use that for, to try to hit the vinyl and see what temperature it is. Because without any kind of uh, quantitative me measuring device, you really have no clue how hot you're getting any of this stuff. So that's what I was gonna use that for. I didn't do that, um, but I think it really would be useful in the future if I was doing uh, more vinyl. Um, so I think that's everything on the table. Uh, those are all the, the, the basic. I have some uh, masking tape here. Uh, I'm sorry, some uh, uh, duct tape. I wouldn't recommend this for anything relating to vinyl. It's way too strong. Don't you don't even use it to uh, to wrap up your vinyl with. So, you know, once once I have a roll of this, you know, and I and I want to try to keep it all together or something, don't even use it to stick the vinyl together to uh, to keep it in a roll. It's way too strong. It leaves uh, an adhesive behind. Uh, this stuff is awful. I use this. Um, I guess while I'm talking about this, I'll describe to you how I debadged uh, the back of the car. So what I did, imagine you have the Model S laying right here, okay? I took masking tape, masked around the Model S completely, okay? And um, I did it so that it went all the way to where the trunk kind of curves around. And by doing that, I cut right on the edge of the trunk and I had a perfect template of exactly where the Model S would fit. Okay, so I take that and I actually have that in here saved. Um, and here's my little template. There you go. So here, yeah, there you go. So here is my little template that I saved. From my, there you go. And that might, yeah, that was for the the Model S. And you see this little, you see this little curve right here. That curve will fit right back on the trunk. So if I ever want to put these letters on, I just stick this masking tape right back on the corner. I know exactly where to put the Model S, and then I can lay in the letters. And I have the same thing for the 90D right here. So that's, I think, going to be super useful if I ever want to put them back on. Now the letters, they're in there too, but they're a bit of a mess. I, I, I laid um, duct tape over the top of them because I really wanted them to stick and not move around. Well, as soon as I started heating up the emblems to uh, remove it with the, um, the floss, yeah, that masking tape, that, I'm sorry, not masking tape, the um, duct tape, the gooeyness from it, just made a damn mess out of my letters. Uh, it is, it's, it's atrocious. Um, so on the 90D, I use masking tape instead, right over the top of them to keep them all in one piece, slid uh, um, the, the floss underneath, they popped right off, they're stuck to the, uh, the masking tape, and now you have a perfect thing to slap right back on the car. Perfect. Long story short, do not use duct tape for anything. It's it's just, it's, it's, it's too much. Um, okay, I think that's uh, everything I have here. I'll put links in the description of all the tools and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.